Hi, everybody. Uh, this is Peter Chipkowski on April 21st, 2020. Uh, I'm delighted to uh, uh, welcome you to another segment of a series of uh, conversations with uh, folks in the Rojan area. We're honored today to uh, have a conversation with Matthew White. Uh, welcome, Matthew. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Matthew is a Hillsdale resident and the uh, owner of several businesses here in Hillsdale. So I'm delighted to uh, have a conversation with you today, Matt, uh, to, um, uh, I don't know, a little, a little moment in time in this unusual uh, situation that we find ourselves in. Yep. Yeah. Here we are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, so why don't we, why don't we start, Matt, by having you tell us a little bit about, about your personal story, uh, where you come from, and uh... well, I was born in Texas. Um, I was my first career was as a ballet dancer, which brought me to New York City when I was seventeen. Uh, moved out to Los Angeles to dance professionally there, where I met my husband. 38 years ago, I guess now. Um, eventually, we ended up back in New York City. And when we did, we were seeking a place to escape New York City, as everybody does. So uh, serendipitously, we found Hillsdale, uh, completely unaware of the village, the hamlet itself. I, we just fell in love with a piece of property and built a house. And that was... We started that process maybe 14 years ago. And about five years ago, I became, I, I obviously became more active in the community on the Hamlet Committee, on Historic Hillsdale Committee. And um, so in a sense, I say, what I say is that the, the Hamlet of Hillsdale has, has sort of become, at this time in my life as a 60 plus year old person, um, has become my life's work. So. I own now two businesses in Hillsdale, the Hillsdale General Store, which uh, opened this October, will be nine years ago. And in September, this coming September, my kitchen store and cooking school, HGS Home Chef, right across the street, will be open five years this, this fall. So um, those keep me very busy. Um, both are in historic buildings that I love. And that's also a very important part of it for me as a preservationist and, uh, and, a, great, and a designer. Um, uh, oh, I, I skipped the fact that I was an interior designer sort of between the ballet career and the Hillsdale thing. Mm -hmm. I, I, and I still have an interior design business in the city uh, that is mostly run by my partner, which allows me to be here full time. Um, Matt, I think I, I, yeah, sorry. May I interrupt you, Matt? Um, yes. what, so what, what inspired you to, um, to invest in in this little hamlet, it, it it was a very different place those years ago when when you were building a home and began getting involved in some activities here in, in the town. What, what was, inspired you? I, I mean, you know, a lot of people joke that Hillsdale was the kind of town you drove through, and of course, it's on a crossroad. So that's exactly what we did. We never really paid attention. You know, we we went to the grocery store, the hardware store. But after a few years here, I just saw all these beautiful buildings that and some of them were empty. And um, um, I learned uh, that the um, general store building was going to be privately on the market. Um, it was at that time a video store. Um, and you know, the building itself is not interesting in an architectural way, but it's so central to the town and it has this really fabulous history of being the Dimmick store, which anybody who knows Hillsdale knows, knows what that means. And they, it was the same family, the Dimmick family, that ran it for literally a century. Um, and I just, I love that stories like that. And it felt to me that this somehow had to remain some sort of general store and that's what inspired me to do that uh, to open that business yeah did you happen to see some of the early photographs of the building before uh, you uh, acquired the building because you say it's not architecturally an interesting building but in fact it's it's uh, in, of a certain vernacular of a certain kind of oh, style yeah. of historic building and oh, it's yeah. in every prominent postcard of 
early Hillsdale. Exactly. Well, you know, by, by not interesting, I mean, you know, it doesn't have, it's not a high style building. It's not a, it's not a, you know, Greek revival or, a, you know, of the more pretentious kind of architectural forms you saw in the 19th century. But uh, it's a very simple building and a very um, uh, utilitarian building. Mm -hmm. uh, and it still has sort of the classic, you know, um, Greek revival shape, I suppose. But um, I, I don't, I, I honestly don't know if I saw photographs. I obviously saw photographs of the outside because we started collecting postcards once, once I got more interested in, in Hillsdale as a, as a hamlet, the hamlet of Hillsdale. And, and as you say, it, it factors in several postcards from the 19th and early 20th centuries. Um, I think after uh, we purchased it and started the restoration of the building, that's when I discovered interior shots and more historic images of it as a working general store. And of course, I find those so alluring. And, I, and then, of course, I've made it my job to kind of collect any sort of ephemera or objects that relate to the building. And, and I have, uh, you know, I have old um, ledger, ledger books and, and um, other photographs. And then as I've been there for so many years, family members of members of the Dimmick family have brought me things as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, I love that. They'll, they'll all eventually go to the historic society, but for now I'm, I'm kind of holding on to them and, and I display them once in a while at the store. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the other building and your other business, Matt. Um, so it's, the other building is a Victorian, um, sort of a Gothic revival uh, building built in 1870. I actually think some of, part of it might have been built earlier and then they restyled it in the 1870s, but um, has a big front porch and some really nice details on the outside. And um, it was a, an apartment building for many years. It had been turned into an apartment. It was a single family house originally, but had been turned into an apartment building. And when, and it, we literally sit at our counter at the cash register and look across at this building. And, you know, the porch was filled with old furniture and um, it was a absentee landlord and not a good situation, I don't think, for the people who did live there. And eventually it, um, it came on the market. I guess, I think it was foreclosed because, uh, but, sadly um, ignored for many years and overgrown and you could barely see it for the trees and all the greenery and, sh and, and weeds are growing around it. But it's still underneath it was such a pretty building. And so I just, in my mind, I, I wasn't looking to open a kitchen store, although, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know, the gender, you know, and uh, first of all, anybody who goes in retail in the late 19th century, let alone the, the coronavirus situation is, is insane because, you know, we have the internet now and a lot of people don't buy, buy in shops anymore. But you said late 19th century, but you meant late 20th century, didn't you? Of uh, wait. wait, what? Late uh, what? Anyone who goes into business in the late 19th century. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> yeah. In the late 21st century. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. Early, Early 21st, 21st century. Yeah. Well, I, I'm getting, I see I'm so old. I don't even know what century I'm in. <laughs> um, yeah. I kind of feel like I do live in a lot of centuries in my head. I really you do. do. You do. Uh, and and I, I enjoy, you know, I, I, I do feel like I'm a, a person from the past. And that we way. like that about you. Right? Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I enjoy it. gives me great pleasure. So you um, opened up this uh, astonishing kitchen store. Well, you know, I sold kitchen stuff at the general store in wow. a small way. And uh, it, everybody needs kitchen tools, you know, you need to replace them or you need, you know, whatever. Uh, but I think the key part of it was the cooking classes. So we, there are two kitchens in, that I put into the building um, for teaching. And in the last four and a half years, we've had more than 300 cooking classes. And honestly, that's the driver of the business. That's what brings people in. Uh, retail by itself is very, very difficult. Um, but um, giving somebody, people something to do mm -hmm. rather than just mm -hmm. things to buy enhances the buying part of it for people. And um, 
it's fun. You know, it, it, we've uh, we've had incredible experts, amazing experts, come teach and uh, uh, cookbook authors and all that. And and I've learned so much, so much about. I've been a pretty de decent cook my my whole life, but have become be much better learning in my own cooking school. <laughs> I've enjoyed some of your posts on social media. I believe I saw a lemon yogurt cake recently. That, oh yes, uh, so, yeah, has caused me to. Uh, um, buy a couple of lemons <laughs> <laughs> good i'm glad uh i think well everybody that's the thing with uh, what we're going through at in this moment is everybody's stuck at home and they mm -hmm. have and my passion has always been domestic life so ignoring the great tragedy and the difficulty that we're facing i really do love immersing myself in being home and and cooking and taking on projects that I've been putting off at the house for many, many years. So. Sure, sure. So, and I think everybody feels that way to a certain degree, although I know we want this to be over. Uh, let me um, ask you about your third building in town, yeah. mm -hmm. um, because it's, it's such an um, attractive um, little structure. Uh, so tell right. us a little bit about the story of that building and uh, that business. Um, well, it's, uh, it is a small... Um, was a small um, Greek revival cottage is what I would say, maybe about 1850. There's not a history on it because so much of the building, the historic fabric of the building had been removed. It didn't have any of the original siding. It, it had the original shape, the, the front part of the building. Um, and we, my plan was to restore that to, to uh, it, at one point, I believe in the 1980s, somebody had added like a big two story structure off the back, which was turned it into an apartment building or a larger home. And um, if you look in the old postcards, you'll see that building there mm -hmm. without the big addition on the back. And it's right next door to the kitchen store directly across the street from the general store. So we share a parking lot, the kitchen store, and this little building. So, but as I really looked at the, what was salvageable of the building, the, the foundation was gone and most of the wood timbers were rotted. So um, it, we decided just to simply demolish it and build, reproduce, because we had the, dimensions because the original structure the framing was of the front building was there so we we um took those dimensions and uh based on old photographs i re i rebuilt as close as possible what was there because i didn't want to change the the feeling of that little down you know we have there's only what is it six buildings that stand surround cullen park and it seems so important to me to maintain that small town mm -hmm. original mm -hmm. feeling of the 19th century buildings and there's one 18th century building um so we rebuilt it uh and i lease it to tiny hearts farm they're a organic flower farmer in copaic they um have a flower shop there they teach like me next door at the kitchen store they teach classes so they do flower arranging classes and planting classes and so they do workshops there which is really fun and people really love them it's a delightful young couple uh, they do a lot of weddings so they have a big workshop where they create the flowers for weddings uh, they do csas where they sell their flowers like vegetable farmers sell their vegetables and uh, it's, I mean, another big motivator for me in all of this is to not just, you know, have businesses, but to hopefully bring life to a village that um, historically was always a center, a small rural center, but still on a crossroads. And, mm -hmm. you know, as you know, as a historian or, you know, as a historian of Hillsdale, you you know the the history of and all the photos of the bustling little village the ha hamlet that we had and um that's what i would like to mm -hmm. recreate is that mm -hmm. feeling of you know a charming place where you go to shop and see people and all that it is true uh, all these all these villages around us and well throughout the united states frankly mm -hmm. all had their little bustling mm -hmm. center and of course we had a a railroad which which mm -hmm. which helped as well Mm -hmm. But but um, Matt, I have to say thank you for for um, 
seeing uh, that path in this community and for, for being such a big part of its reawakening, uh, not only you know, restoring these beautiful buildings, but bringing people here, bringing people here. Well, thank you. I, that's very kind for you, of you to say, and I appreciate that. I really, really do. I, the, I, the other part, I think, that in the general store building, besides the general store, there's obviously um, a wonderful restaurant, Crossroads. Which, so I'm, I'm a landlord to three other businesses in the general store building. And mm -hmm. so we specifically built out our, our you know, um, rethought how that all the spaces in that building could be utilized so that we would have more life in that building. I'm mm -hmm. so proud and, I, and, I'm, and I'm so a little worried, of course, too, at this particular time because small businesses are hard even when it's going well. And I, I'm hoping that all the tenants there mm -hmm. survive. Uh, there's a wonderful print shop. She has 19th century presses that she prints uh, letter presses, letter press printers that she prints by hand. Um, uh, Jane is the name of the the, the proprietor proprietress of that, and and uh, she's very creative and wonderful. And then there's an art gallery in the back. So um, it's a fr scary time for our businesses. Um, but you know, I also, and again, I always go back to history. I'm always thinking of, of the long view. Not always, but I, you know, I, I try to think of the long view, and being in a place that has this, you know, since 1855 has been a little business center, um, and you think of what they went through, the de the depression, the 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 assassination of President Lincoln. And I even have a, a one of the, the books I have, the, one of the ledger books I have is during that year, 1865. Mm. And you, you kind of see a little few days where no, no, nothing was sold, you know? Um, so, you, you know, there, the pandemic of, was it 1918? You know? That's right, that's you know? right. And more, so, than, more than that one. Yeah, yes, exactly. So, um, it kind of, you connect to our ancestors who had hardships. Mm. And I, 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 it's not lost on me. And, and I also, what, what, I was literally just there at the store half an hour ago. I'm, I'm refinishing the floor. I'm taking this opportunity of no business mm. and no traffic to kind of spruce up the shop. So when we do open, it feels, you know, kind of, there's like, a, there's a bit of a new energy and, and I want to, I'm trying to look at it in a, in a creative way of, of not just, okay, we're just going to reopen and be like we were, but hopefully we'll be better and people mm -hmm. will come back. And um, so, I, you know, yeah, that's the goal. I, I appreciate your long view. Um, we are part of a, a long continuum or trajectory. And mm -hmm. it, it's, I think it's, it's, it's good for us to know that we will, we will emerge, we will come out of this and, yeah. Mm -hmm. Our town is reawakened and with folks like you and with so many active citizens, um, it, makes a, it makes a world of difference. Mm -hmm. um, any other thoughts, Matt, about, about your businesses in this time of, of, of crisis or um, uh, I, have to, it, it, I have to say, um, I mean, you, you have been so great about talking about the power of historic preservation and how conservation and the ideas of preservation and respect for the past mm -hmm. support economic growth. Right. Well, I think also beautiful places attract people. And it's um, no matter how much money you have or you know, what you do for a living, everybody likes to be in a beautiful place. And it, it feeds us in a way that I think I think Americans don't, I, th I, I think societally we don't encourage that as much as maybe other cultures do. And, um, you know, if you go to Italy, you know, and you go to these, village, these historic villages that are, of course, a thousand years old or 700 years old or, you know, much older than our little hamlet. But, and the ones that people are drawn to are the ones that are preserved. And the, and the ones that are respected and where there's an, a real effort to maintain 
not not just the history but the beauty you know flower pots go a long way you know little things you know sprucing you know painting your shutters washing your windows and and uh, so i was out there sweeping my front porch today and refinishing the floor because i want to maintain maintenance is hard and <laughs> you have to keep doing it and so i my dream is that every little every little building in town ha is filled with life and uh, and maintained to the best of the owner's ability and uh, and that we become one of those places where um, it's a joy to just come in and buy a candy bar or to buy a house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you, Matt. Um, you I'm going it. to wrap this conversation up. Um, and thank you for your example, for your leadership in our community. And thank you, Peter, um, I, and yours. I really appreciate this opportunity. And uh, thank you. Stay safe. You too.